Cliff, thank you very much for joining us. We're really delighted to have you here. Could we start with you introducing yourself and just telling us what it is you're doing as part of a two-week residency exploring Galatea? Yeah, absolutely. So my name is Myth. Um, Myth. Uh, I'm the artistic director of Wildworks. I'm a designer and director. And over the last two weeks, we've been at uh, Newbury 101 Creation Space uh, with the Galatea team. Um, and I think my main focus over the last two weeks has been looking at um, space and how to incorporate the design um, with the um, ensemble cast and um, yeah it's been a real uh, organic process actually uh, and really um, a really kind caring environment where everyone's really had the opportunity to uh, to input into each process and there's been creative tasks making tasks design tasks um, costume costuming tasks um, we've been out on the common and working out in the landscape um, and taking those ideas in and out of the building so developing small ideas um, inside and kind of scratching those ideas and then taking them outside to see how they work and making those things translate larger in the landscape. Um, it's been a really kind, um, really um, lovely environment actually to be in over the last couple of weeks um, after the pandemic, after the last 18 months. Um, it's been a really healthy environment for people to get back together and um, and learn how to create around each other. I think, yeah, it's been it's been a really great process. Fantastic, thank you. And you mentioned taking the show, taking the rehearsals, kind of from the room outdoors. And you also uh, mentioned your your relationship working within Wildworks. Just people who aren't familiar with, with Wildworks, would you mind telling us a little bit about about that and also what that that collaboration with Wildworks and with yourself, what that's bringing to Galatea? Yeah. So. Um, well, if anyone doesn't know Wildworks, we're a, um, we call ourselves a landscape theatre company, um, and that, what that generally means is um, we don't we create theatre, but in non-theatrical spaces. So we create theatre in, I should say, non-traditional spaces. So found spaces, and when we use the word landscape, it's um, that can be any landscape, so outdoor landscape, but also some indoors. So we've worked in quarries and car parks and royal palaces and medinas. Um, and um, I guess the way that we work is rather than um, rather than touring an already established idea and taking that piece of work and uh, essentially just. Um, landing it in a site and hoping that it, it fits. We work in a very site specific way so we look within that landscape and work within that landscape to see how the story really moulds with that landscape and to make sure that um, yeah that we're really using the gifts that the, that the environment and that landscape gives us for free. Um, it's been a really interesting process over the last how many years is it now? Two, since 2016, five years um, that we've been working on this process. Um, and some of those ideas, like I said, start very small indoors. Um, but um, there's often a safety, a, um, a fool's gold safety, really, of, um, of creating work inside and then hoping that it will translate into the landscape when you have so many. Uh, uh, opposing uh, forces that are almost that can add to the work but also can um, diminish the work so um, I think it's my role to try and um, ease people out of that comfort zone of that safety of the indoor uh, rehearsal room or that black box theatre and uh, encourage a group outside as much as possible trying those ideas out seeing what works over distance um, what language translates when it in different weathers, you know, when it's very windy, it's very hard to hear um, spoken word. And I think that's what's um, been super exciting over the last couple of weeks, working with um, 
a uh, deaf performance team, BSL speakers, um, with also different languages and also singing to kind of cook this new soup, this new way of working that, um, that relies far more on the visual language rather than the um, spoken word. That's great, thank you. Um, and when you first looked at this play five years ago, and since then as you've been working on it with this company, do you mind telling us about any sense of visual cues coming from the play? Did it feel like a play which lent itself to being outdoors? Or did it, did it feel like work to try and think about moving it into an outside space? Um, my journey's always really interesting with plays because I'm, um, I'm not an avid reader and things, I think I've always been really quite fearful of um, Shakespeare and, and kind of traditional text in a way. Um, so I think on initial reading of it, um, it was a lot, of, a lot to take in and a lot of um, working in a way that I wouldn't normally feel comfortable. But I think over the last five years, we've re really developed a shared vocab of working, really, in, um, different, with, within different techniques where I now feel that I have um, a far deeper understanding of the story. Um, and not just a deeper understanding, like a deeper pleasure in understanding the story. And I think every day I get um, surprised by something new, like even this afternoon, and we're coming to the end of our residency, but um, this afternoon, um, just finding those, even still finding those moments where I, I, I understand the, the text and the rhythm of how Lily used to write. And um, I think what I enjoy so much about Lily's work, and we talk about, we've been talking about it a lot over the last couple of weeks, um, which lends itself really comfortably to landscape working is that idea of Lily often saying, you know, is it one thing, is it another thing? No, it's neither of those things, it's something else. And I think when you work outside, you, you can't really rely on those clear, uh, uh, the things that you thought you knew um, often appear differently, you know, and in levels of light or, you know, um, different, uh, different weathers and different lighting states and different audiences every night and things have a different alchemy each time that you present I guess every every time you create work outside and I think um, it's been really rewarding over the last two weeks for me coming into this room thinking that I I'd, I'd had a rough shape of what I thought the show was going to be and even now, coming to the end of the two weeks, um, very definitely that's kind of been turned on its head again and I feel excited about that. It feels, um, it kind of always keeps growing, this piece of work. Mm. And um, yeah, we're ever so, ever so nearly there to kind of find it at that, that form of shape. Thank you so much. It's been really fun watching it grow with you and I'm looking forward to seeing where it grows next. Thank you for your time, Mick.